Kia ora koutou, Marky here with the Trademark Shaky Camera and it's another episode of Early's Late Reviews. Uh, why is it called Early's Late Reviews? Because that's my surname is Early and uh, I tend to get to things quite late <laughs> and it's reviews. Well, the last part probably was fairly obvious. So we started with TV series and then we got into films and then we got into books. Uh, so I did my first book review kind of fairly recently. Uh, so I haven't read for ages because sometimes I just get out of the habit of reading, particularly when I'm tired or kind of doing a lot of work and concentrating a lot. I don't, don't read that much. And then I get into bursts of reading, which I really enjoy when I get into it. And I went to the library to, um, uh, to do a bit of work actually. Um, and I, I thought I'd, as part of my procrastination ritual I looked at a few books and ended up taking some out but I was delighted to find Ronald Hutton's The Druids in the library now um why is this why was this so delightful well um I know Ronald Hutton uh and um I'm in New Zealand um so I didn't really expect to find this book <laughs> I mean his books are everywhere in the UK um didn't expect to find it in New Zealand so that was kind of a treat really um, so I'm going to put my cards on the table here. I don't normally talk about uh, my belief systems um, on the, the channel for a number of reasons, really. Um, partly because as a psychotherapist, it's, it's not always good to um, share too much about your belief system. Because if you're working with somebody that's got a different belief system, they may kind of feel, uh, you know, that you might not be able to empathize or you might be hostile to... Uh, their belief system uh, and not sympathetic to it so that, that's kind of partly it um, and also because uh, my beliefs are quite complicated and also because I don't believe in beliefs <laughs> so um, I kind of for me uh, for me and it is very you know personal thing um, spirituality is about a connection it's not about a set of rules or beliefs so, and I think that beliefs are always an approximation, you know, a very vague approximation. And my beliefs will change. Uh, I know that as the kind of person I am, what I believe now, I won't, probably won't believe in five years or maybe even five minutes. So, so that's one of the other kind of things, really. So, yeah, not to alienate anyone. And um, so you can kind of guess and speculate and stuff. But I'm, I'm kind of quite a smorgasbord, really. <laughs> so, but uh, I will tell you this, I am a druid. Okay. Um, but to me, that's not really about a belief system. Again, you know, being a druid is about um, an approach, a way of being. Again, about connection. Um, uh, what is a druid? Well, you could ask 20 druids that question and come up with 100 answers. I know you thought I was going to say 20 answers, but 100 answers. Uh, druidry is a lot more to druidry than what you think. So I might do a video on demystifying druidry, actually. That would be a good thing to do. I've touched on druidry a little bit in some videos. One of the videos on the bardic chair, so check those those out if you're, um, if you're interested in that. So, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so druidry means different things to different people. So for me, it's uh, it is spiritual, but I don't. For me, druidry is not a religion. It's not like a religion that I follow or practice. Uh, it's more um, something that I resonate with, and um, it's quite cultural. It's quite a cultural thing. It's to do with the connection with the land and the connection with ancestors. I think, you know, every... And living in New Zealand is really interesting because one of the things I'm noticing more and more is that the, the Maori tradition is very, very similar to Druidry. In fact, the Maori culture is very similar to the Celtic culture, and including some of the artwork and things like that. Um, so, um, so Druidry, in one of its interpretations, is, is very similar to uh, indigenous spirituality. Um, so, like I said, reverence for ancestors, connection with the land. Um, and Druidry is very British, and I'm very British, um, even though I'm, a, uh, I'm an illegal alien. Oh, well, illegal, illegal alien uh, in New Zealand at the moment. So, the book, Ronald Hutton, the Druid. So, Ronald Hutton, um, so you've probably seen Ronald Hutton on television, if you watch television, uh, even if you don't think you know him, because he pops up all the time uh, to give expert opinions on things. Um, and he's got kind of two um, areas of expertise for which he is well known, and probably lots of areas of expertise for which he's less well known. Uh, so one is um, 
kind of the English Civil War period um, and, and kind of around and beyond that. And the other is uh, ancient religion. Um, so, uh, so he's, and he's a university professor, uh, and a real character. Uh, he's quite kind of Oscar Wildean. He has a, a silver tongue, uh, and a very kind of, uh, very unique, a very Ronald way of speaking. He's very, very eloquent, very interesting to listen to. You can listen to Ronald's one of these people that you could, you could listen to for hours. You know, he's, um, has a great turn of phrase, good use of humor, very charismatic. Uh, and he always wears, uh, I think it's called an ascot, an ascot, which is one of the kind of the, uh, neckties that kind of splays out, uh, and a kind of jacket, um, Kind of, you know, he's got he's got a very distinct look. Uh, he's got long hair, round glasses. Um, yeah, he's he's an institution. He's a legend. Is is Ronald Hutton? <laughs> so uh, so it was a delight. You know, feeling a bit homesick, I guess, in a way. Um, and to read one of his books was was kind of quite comforting, really. And of course, I've read it in his tone of voice. <laughs> so so this is an old book. So I said it's, it's early as late reviews. OK, so this is a book from, I think, 2007. And in this, he talks about how he's in the process of writing a more in-depth follow up, uh, which I believe is what, he, what was published later as uh, I think it's called Blood and, and Mistletoe. So what he's done in, in this book, um, is uh, as he as he describes it, it's a thematic uh, exploration of druidry. So I'm just going to jog my memory by looking at some of the chapter headings. Um, so what he's done is, uh, so he's got the patriotic druids, the wise druid, druids, the green druids, the demonic druids, the fraternal druids, the rebel druids, and future druids. Okay. Um, so these all kind of sound like archetypes, but he's actually, uh, they're very much kind of real, uh, either in art or in people. Um, so, so this isn't, this isn't just a kind of a wafty book about archetypes, you know, this is kind of solid history and lots of detail. Um, you know, really kind of, really kind of great, you know, brilliantly, um, Brilliant clarity, really. Um, so, for example, I mean, if you look at the, the history of, of Druidry, it's not what you think. Um, I'll do a video on this. Druidry is not what people think it is. I will demystify it. So, so Ronald, uh, talking about demystifying, Ronald is the great, you know, he's, he's the demystifier that demystifiers look like me kind of look up to. Um, very, very complicated Druid history. Incredibly complicated. And um, what Ronald has, has been able to do in this book is is pick that apart and, and kind of um, give a very uh, clear... Um, accurate um, and um, interesting uh, timeline and, and and all these different groups. So, so it kind of started with lots of groups, some of which, you know, turned, turned and blended into other groups, some of which influenced others, some of which were antagonistic to others, all of which seem very similar. So if you look at Stonehenge, and I didn't know this, you know, the early 20th century history of Druids at Stonehenge, you know, lots of different groups that celebrated the solstice at different times. Some, you know, for periods celebrated there, but not the solstice because they weren't allowed to for various reasons. Um, immensely complicated and you've got kind of broadly the the kind of the welsh uh, establishment druids uh, which were associated with the welsh gorseth and the eisteddfod uh, and then you've got the the more radical um independent druids and then you've got kind of things like f uh, fraternal societies and uh friendly societies so a lot of the original druid groups are actually um you know support groups for workers you know, before pensions and the national health and the welfare state came in, uh, you had what was known as friendly societies, and there still are friendly societies, but a lot of these were actually uh, named as druid orders and druid groups. So immensely complicated, um, but what Ronald manages to do brilliantly is to bring it to life in a very clear, readable way, um, and um, also very interesting. He, he brings the characters to life, uh, there's lots of stuff about Yolo Morganog uh, that I didn't know. So I, I was kind of, it was like, for me, it was, it was like being, a, being hungry and eating a wonderful meal, really, this book. It was kind of, you know, f definitely kind of feeding me intellectually all the things that I wanted to know. And I'm really hungry to read the um, uh, Blood and Mistletoe next. 
uh, which is which is fantastic. So this is not a book for anyone that's kind of new to the field of joint interest in, in Druidry. Um, there are other things to read, I think, first to give you more of a basic outline. But if you want uh, readable uh, historical detail um, and you, with a broad view, a broad, a broad stroke, um, this is the book for, for you, really. Now, it's in, the other thing that's kind of quite poignant is um, he talks about Tim Sebastian, uh, somebody that I, was was the founder and chosen chief of the secular order of druids, uh, who was somebody that I that, that I knew um, that I knew quite well, uh, who uh, who died quite young, um, and uh, so this book was written before his death, uh, so that's kind of quite poignant for me to 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 see that, that you know that was written prior to then. Kind of time flies, doesn't it? Um, so um, yeah, this is one for druids really and historians um it's written for the layperson rather than the academic but i think it actually you know it says in the description that, that academics would also find this uh very useful and edifying and i think i think they would so um yeah so if you're interested in the topic of druidry this is not your starting point let me know if if you're looking for something to read on that front nothing nothing is immediately springing to mind but i, I will be able to recommend some stuff for you um, or point you in the right direction uh, but for for druids bards ovates um free thinkers um uh, radical politicians or people with radical pol political interests who are interested in political history because Druidry was you know deeply intertwined with uh, with politics as well back in the day um, as it still is in lots of ways so um, I'm gonna give this oh I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10 I think um, there's things that it doesn't talk about but it's very clear about that it, you know it, talk, it talks about in the in the um, uh, prologue it talks about and that it's not it's not intended to cover everything uh so it does what it says on the tin um has some good humor in there it's a uh, nice variation in language it's a pleasure to read um and lovely to to see some to see something complicated rendered into something so readable and entertaining uh so enjoy and uh yeah and uh blessings of the Arwen be upon you. Rangy Mario.